Salut tout le monde, on est avec Vinny Paul ici, euh, enseignement de Pantera évidemment, mais maintenant avec Elliot. Euh, on est au Eddie Montreal 2013, présentement on prend quelques minutes juste pour lui parler de son band qui vient juste d'avoir une prestation sur la scène. Vinny Paul, how are you man? I am great! There you go. How are you? Uh, you just had a new show man, how did you, how did you go? I loved it, man. It was. Uh, it reminded me of the European festivals that we just finished doing. You know, we've been on the gigantic tour through the U.S. and western part of Canada, and you know, most of it's indoors and some of them are amphitheaters. But this was very much like Hellfest in France or Donington or Download, whatever they call it. Are you serious? Man? Yeah, yeah. The crowd was great, man. I, I, I mean, we went on at two o'clock in the afternoon. You know, we woke them up, and and you know, in turn, they gave us the energy back, and it kind of helped push us. You know, so it, it was a good day. It was a great show. Is that alcohol? That would be Sky Vodka and water. Yes, there you go. Absolutely. Your preferred drink? That's my drink, man. <laughs> there you go. Um, you, you played uh, here in Montreal. Is that your first time at the Heavy Montreal? Uh, yes. First time ever at this festival in any band I've ever been in. But uh, I've always played in Montreal and all the bands I've been a part of. And it's always been a great, great metal city and just a great place to play. Your band is called El Yeah. Uh, is that a simple way just to have your the crowd into it? Like, oh, El Yeah! Oh, come on, El Yeah! You know, when we were thinking about the band names and everything, I mean, there's one very affirmative way of saying yes, and that's Hell Yeah! Yeah. You know, you, you, <laughs> if you ask your friend, hey man, you, want, you guys want to go to the titty bar tonight? You don't go, oh yeah. You go, Hell Yeah! You guys want to go have some drinks tonight? Hell yeah! You know, it means let's do this, you know, and that's really the meaning behind the band. So, you know, we get up and, and give it a Hell Yeah, and it just so happens. Be, that the crowd can chant it and go along with it too, you know. And if somebody says no to go to a uh, to a titty bar or to have a drink, what happens? They're pussy. It's, they're pussy. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, or you, they don't like pussy. One of the two. <laughs> there's a there's a view of your band that there's uh, a lot of strong personalities because there's a lot of great bands: Mud Vane, Nothing yep. Face, Pantra, of course. Um, what happens during a jam, man? I mean, it, it, do the personalities ever come into conflict? Never. Never. No, not. From day one, we all put all our egos to the side, you know, and it's always been about the music first and, and our friendship and everything, and uh, that's never an issue with this band. That's one of the reasons why I love being a part of this band so much. It's, it's a family, man. We really love each other. Uh, we got each other's backs, and, and we work fucking hard, you know, and, and we don't let one guy in the band slip one way or another, you know. We're all in this together. and. Uh, we fight for everything that we get, you know, nothing's given to us because I was in Pantera or they were in Mudvayne or any of that. You know, we had to go from this plateau all the way down to here and start over and now we're back about right here and after next year we're hoping to get back up there, you know, so that's kind of what we're at. And that's true because your first two albums, uh, what I think is maybe you were trying to emulate a sound that people wanted to hear. And with the last album, I think you found your sound and I think it shows on the stage and it shows with the fans. Do people come to you expecting something? Do, do they well, agree with them? You know, uh, the first two records were really an experimentation for us, you know, and a great way for us to step away from the previous bands that we'd all been a part of and to do something different, you know. We really wanted to expand on the sound. We wanted to hell yeah to be very diverse and very broad. And we touched on, you know, some bluesy roots, some southern rock, uh, almost country at times with a song like Alcohol and Ass, stuff like that. And we kind of got all that out of our system when we went to write Band of Brothers. We just said, let's get back to our metal roots, man. Let's, let's bring uh, all the elements that we each brought to the previous bands we were part of into Hell Yeah and see what happens. And I think it made the record that people really wanted to hear from us from the start, you know. So, uh, really proud of it, love the direction of it, and we'll continue with that on the next record. I had a chance to have uh, Rex from uh, Kill the Valeo in an interview, and I asked him the question, how, do you, how does it feel to start again? You know, does, does it feel like the underground again, in oh, a way? I loved it, man. You know, I, it's nothing greater than a challenge, you yeah. know, and especially when you've been to the top of the rock and you want to do it again. You know, it's like a, a hockey team winning the, the, the Stanley Cup or a football team winning the Super Bowl, you know. Once you get that taste of it, you want to do it again, you know, and, and to be able to do it with some different people is that much more special, you know, to really be able to carry it and go that far. And that's the drive that I got. That's the drive that this band has. And, uh, you know, I really believe we'll attain that kind of success at some point. How long can you do it, man? I mean, you, you party hard. People expect you to party hard. How long can you do it? I'm going to do it as long as I can do it, man. You know, I feel no, just better. just years. I feel better than I ever have in my entire life, uh, physically. You know, I, I love being on the road more than I ever have in my entire life. 
it's it's all good, man. You know, and you know, even back in the Pantera days, you know, me and my brother always dreamed of Pantera being the the Rolling Stones of heavy metal. You know, yeah. we really wanted it you were, to man. last forever. You know, and uh, unfortunately, you know, things happen and, and it didn't get to happen. But you know, I'm gonna keep doing this as long as I can. You know, my dad and a lot of people always, man, how long are you gonna do this? You know, don't you want to do something else? I'm like, no. And I was like, why do you think the Rolling Stones still play? Yeah. They don't need fucking money. <laughs> they, they do it because they like to play fucking and entertain people, man. There's nothing, there's not a bigger rush than that in the world, you know. And beverage, too. That's right, man. Yeah. Uh, uh, a festival just announced a Pantera reunion, which is, I, I don't think it's true. It's, it's not Wh true. What the fuck is going to happen with that? I mean, it's you, not you, true. It, well, all I'm going to say about it is there's no way you can have a reunion without Dimebag Dirt. They, they, That's Thank all there you. is to it. Thank that's, you. That's all there is to it. And I've been saying this all along for who knows how long. It's not going to happen, man. You know, that's the past, man. I have, you know, if you live in the past, you have no future, man. I want to move forward in my life, and I love doing hell yeah, and that's all I'm focused on, man. Are you going to sue their ass, man? You know, it's bullshit, dude. It's not even worth wasting the time. You know, all they're doing is fucking with all the fans and riling them up and blah, blah, blah. You know, I've had attorneys send them cease and desist letters and stuff. And, it's it's gonna continue to happen, you know. It was a pleasure, man. Thank you, dude. Thank Here. you so much. Absolutely. Thank you,